I welcome you to our 17th uh, part of the series, Understanding Fear. It's actually the 17th in the section where we're dealing with terms for fear. And so we're going to continue on. Again, this is a definitive study where we break down the terminologies for fear in Scripture to compile a discursive meaning so then we can know how fear engages our mind, how it can undermine our faith, our spirituality, and our success. Today we're dealing with terms that are associated with fear, but they are actually rendered as fearful in the New Testament. The first term we're going to deal with is the word phaberos, Faberos. It is from the Koine Greek, and it literally means frightful, that is, objectively formidable, fearful or terrible. When something is formidable, then it represents a great threat that is more than enough challenging for you. And so a formidable enemy, in many cases, brings to mind that this enemy is well beyond your reserves well beyond your capability of completing the task, especially if it means dispensing with them. And so it deals with inspiring fear, something that is terrible, again, something that is formidable. It deals with affected with fear or timidity. And so from this perspective, we understand that one is affected the aspect of fear now has grabbed and hold um, all of the instincts and all of the feelings deep within. And so fear has grabbed a hold of the amygdala, which shuts down your reasoning capacity of the cognition. And so now this thing is inspiring fear. If you were not filled with the Holy Ghost, it would overwhelm your spirit and it could literally, again, activate one of the four F's or all of them sequent sequentially, which means that it could activate, number one, the fighting. And then if you see that the, form of, um, the formidableness of the enemy was so great, you could try to flee unless you couldn't get away. Then you would freeze for terror and then eventually faint. Faboros also deals with something that is fearful or terrible, something that inspires fear, that it invokes fear. It can invoke the type of fear then that can overrun your body and cause sensations and cause you to operate out of the perspective of this fear, which means there is a bio mensiological uh, aspect that could bring great harm to the body, could cause heart attacks, could cause an elevated rise in sugar levels, a release of uh, many different chemicals that cause you to move into the fight or flight scenario. And so it's something that is thoroughly terrible, something that invokes something that is a sense of terror within, and so it's dreadful, terrible, uh, terrible, horrifying, significantly horrifying. And so this would be one of those fears that could activate the four Fs. I want to go a little further, and we're going to look at another term that is within the same form, uh, family, and it deals with, again, being fearful. When we look at this next term, again, it is related to the term faberos. It is the word fabetron, fabetron, or fabetron. And it deals with a term that means frightening, well, the definition means frightening thing that is terrific portent. Remember, a portent is a sign or a vision that is so out of the ordinary that it moves you to be amazed. 
when we look at it again and we dive a little further, it can be that which strikes terror, a terror or a cause of fright. Again, it is an objective vision. It is an objective thing. Or it could be a penetrating evaluation of a thought of a thing, which means that it can be controlled by someone else. This thought can be pumped up larger than life. When we see the 12 spies go over into the land, they come back and they influence over 2 million people by saying we were grasshoppers in their sight. And so they created a vision. They created imagery that caused phobetron or phobetron. And so it can be a terror. It can be an image of something that moves you out of a significant boldness, and it can cause cowardice. Here, when we look at it, Mounts, he pronounces the meaning to be something which inspires terror, terribly uh, sighted, or a terrible sight or event. Again, when something inspires terror, it now gains control of the influxes of directions and the influxes of thoughts that cause you to focus on purpose, plan, and objective. If from the Spirit, now remember, the believer, his spirit is sealed until the day of redemption, and so it doesn't mean that fear cannot be activated, but what it does mean, this type of inspiration takes place in the unconscious mind. It tries to override the spiritual capacity by causing the individual to gain so much consideration of the thought, of the thing, of the occasion, or of the experience. And because this experience becomes so overwhelming, it goes right to the unconscious and it continues to surface because unconsciously the mind is not used to being put in such a scenario. And so our own mind activates the brain and the brain activates the mind and so this circular thing continues to go and instead of you seeing the word you will constantly focus on the thing which is the object of your fear and so the inspiration of fear people can be inspired by spiritual i'll say activities or spiritual beings without them flowing through the spirit or having access to the spirit. Sometimes we can receive a thought, sometimes we can hear a word, and sometimes we can see an experience and based upon what others are doing around us, it can create a perspectivism that becomes a behavior in the human mind. I think I have time for one more and we're going to try to squeeze this in very quickly because we don't want to continue to be so many weeks into the studying of the terms of fear that we lose you. And so we want to move now to a term that is specifically, again, going back to the Hebrew. And when we go back to the Hebrew, it becomes very, very important to understand that this term is neither fear nor fear Full. But this term is fearfulness. It is the word palatsuth, palatsuth, and it means a fright, fearfulness, horror, trembling. And so it brings us back to a point where we are shaking. It means shuddering, trembling. Uh, if we were to look at the ancient Hebrew, it, to tremble, uh, horror, something of horror that causes one to tremble. And so it can deal with one that is trembling because of the horror that is seen, an object that causes horror, or an idol. And so it is an inspired thing that not only moves and starts to control the mind, but it can also control the body. And so this word describes the physical reaction of the body in response to fear. And so again, this type of fear is moving the individual into a physical manifestation and therefore it can be fight 
plight, freeze, or faint. And moreover, this is leading one to not necessarily fight because they're trembling, not necessarily even to free, flee, but they are now shuddering, they're trembling. And so it's borderlining on the type of fear that brings one to a point where they start to freeze or they faint. This type of fear is an overtaking fear, a fear that will possess one and cause the mind, the unconscious, and the emotive state of the mind to produce responses in the physical body. I thank you. We went just a little over, but I thank you for being with us. This is our daily Bible study in the series Understanding Fear, and I am your host, Dr. Derek A. Reeves. God bless you. Until next time.